Welcome, Housewives of True Crime. Yeah, that's right. Up in here. Up in here. By the time you guys hear this, I'll be officially done with spring break and back in the Texas. But currently, I've got some crazy setup in the hotel room. So I have no idea what it sounds like. Don't give me shit if it doesn't sound perfect. Okay? Making do, people. Okay. Okay? Just, what do you call that? Not a public service announcement, but just a announcement. Disclaimer. Oh, yes. Disclaimer. That's what they call those things. I'm How's glad going you guys you? are all having a good time out there. Oh, yeah. She's mostly traveling around for sports, so it's not. I know she's not having that good of a time. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see. I'm dragging my entire family to Minnesota for a volleyball tournament, and if anybody is in the volleyball world, they know those tournaments, they can last for like eight hours a day, and they are very loud, and that's not my son's jam at all. Like, loud whistles, lots of people. Oh, yeah. It's like his worst nightmare. Yeah. That so, sounds horrible right? It does. And so I'm worried about that. Like I can't take them to these volleyball tournaments every day, all day. So I don't know. My husband's got to figure out something to do with them. Like Mall of America. It's also cold, 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 AF, cold there. Yeah, Mall yeah. of America. That is kind of exciting actually. Yeah. So I think there's a roller coaster in there. I mean, I don't know how many times you can ride it, but they'll probably ride it a few. Yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah. We've been doing a lot of roller coastery like things around here because we had the house guest. He's going back to Oklahoma, decided he didn't like the job, which is perfectly fine. And we really enjoyed having him out here. So we did stuff, you know, constantly and went yeah. every chance we could. So one of the things we did was we went to SeaWorld, you know? You did. Okay. So my girlfriend is going to San Diego this weekend for, or this week for spring break. And I told her about SeaWorld and, sh and another girl on my tennis team was like, you cannot go to SeaWorld. I was like, but if Gretchen goes to SeaWorld, then I think it's okay because well, listen, you were so not... anti for so yeah, long. Yeah, I was anti for a long time. They're not breeding the orcas anymore. I mean, what are, they can't just release them. I think it's okay. You can tell they're making a big transformation to making it more just like an ocean themed amusement park. And so mm. like, I'm there, I'm down with that. Yeah. I didn't but know so, you went there though to see where I too. Did, I know. Well, you know, we talk all less, over. We talk less frequently when you're, you're gone. I've done a lot of exciting things. So we go all the drag about SeaWorld is and why it wasn't busy when we went is because the rides are mostly water rides. Ain't nobody oh, want to get wet and when it's, it's cold freezing. Right? Okay. Yes. So we're like, hey, Baylor, we paid for your ticket. You're going to ride in front with our kid. Right? We did yes. the same thing in the Disneyland on Splash Mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Did it get wet? Oh my gosh. Okay. So we're, it's this ride called Atlantis and we watch this just tidal wave. Oh. Just hover wrench. Him. Okay. <laughs> and my son who's like, woo. -hoo. So then later on, my son is like, he's really into saying two things right now. He says, technically, mm -hmm. and he uses it completely wrong, but he's like, oh. but technically. And he says, fun fact. Oh, I and like that you, fun fact. You never know if it's really the a truth or not. <laughs> <laughs> not usually fun. He's like, fun fact, mom, since I was already wet, I just peed on that ride. <gasps> <laughs> Did he? I'm like, no, really? You didn't do that, really, dude? He's like, okay, no. Oh, gosh. <laughs> But I think he did. Oh, no. <laughs> well, you could probably tell. Poor Baylor was sitting next to him. That's probably why he left. He's like, fuck this, dude. I'm done. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. That is so funny. We are staying at this resort in Scottsdale that has this surfing machine, right? You can, like, surf on it or you can. Oh, yeah. 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 And it's really rainy today. And so no one is on it. And yesterday it was booked up solid, right? Yeah. So Sean's like, you're wet anyways. Let's go. Let's yeah. get like all the surfing in that we can. But it's fun because the lifeguards are still here. It's open, rain or shine. And Fuck. yeah, the lifeguards are doing it because, you know, that's all they do on these days that nothing's happening. So they're all out there and they're like shredding. It's really fun. Yeah, to watch. I mean, but we're kind of making the most of the fact that it's like, well, shit. We went to my favorite restaurant that you could never get into in Crystal Cove. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because it's nope. been raining. Because nobody wants to go down to the beach. Yeah. It's no like, one wants to. Yeah. 
shoot, party of six, we walk in, no problem. You have no idea how insane that is. You always have to wait like three hours for this place. Yes. It's pretty exciting. They make this Bloody Mary, which I'm not a huge Bloody Mary person, but my husband is. And it's got like a whole crab claw in it. It's just, it makes it warms my heart. <laughs> I always like a Bloody Mary that just looks fun like that. I don't care what you put in it. Put like a dog bone. I don't care. I'll be like, that's so fun. Mm -hmm. The more shit, the better. Also, we made Baylor drive home. So that was convenient too. Like, what are we going to do without him? Oh, you should have had another job for him. Not an ocean job. I know. I know. Too bad. Too bad. Okay, so Gretchen is on the mic today two times in a row because this one case is pretty relevant in the news right now. Word. Uh, well, not the case itself, but the person you're talking about. So are we ready for it? We're ready. Okay, let's do it. Today's case was brought to my attention because it was a really big deal in the early 2000s, and I followed it then. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I can't remember most of the early 2000s. So I <laughs> Why? Most of Is that because you would turn 21 and we were I drinking too much? I blame the apple pucker. Oh, yeah. my gosh. It's okay. totally true. Mm -hmm. And the bad boyfriends. And the bad boyfriends. Sure. Okay. But since then, this case has kind of come full circle and recently made headlines again. So I decided it's time to revisit it because that's what we do. Right? Right. So let me tell you about Bonnie Lee Bakley. Bonnie Lee was the product of young teenage parents, and so she was mostly raised by her grandmother in New Jersey. She grew up very poor, and people close to her say she always felt some kind of way about that, like she was embarrassed and insecure, a little extra about it. Her escape was her love of the movies. She loved all things Hollywood, and she wanted to be a movie star. Problem oh, was, girl, who doesn't? Who doesn't, right? Listen, Tabitha and I recently saw some musical performances, and I was about to take that microphone and <laughs> get up on the stage because I did not feel one person in particular was doing it justice. Give me just your voice. Just the first person. All, just the first person. I, I will do the performing. We both you, were like, man, if I had that voice, I could get up on stage and just I would make do it. love to the audience. <laughs> I'd give it all, right? Okay. Well, anyways, the problem with Bonnie's aspirations for movie stardom, she wasn't particularly conventionally talented. Mm. Okay? She didn't have a whole lot going on in the way of singing or acting, but she was pretty cute, you know, and she knew how to hustle, which is like half of it. Totally. Right? Yeah. Okay. She kind of learned the hustle the hard way. At 16, she started hanging out at a nudist colony, and the folks over there took pictures of her and sold them. Now, Bonnie, to her credit, I was down to turn that exploitation right around and began to pay photographers to take naughty pictures of her herself. Mm. Oh, well. She peddled them herself. Listen, that's one way to go about it and probably okay. get you some money in the bank. Right? She's mm -hmm. not, you know. Wait, she's like the OnlyFans before OnlyFans? Uh, that was the next thing I was going to say. ESPN. Yes, she is like the original, the, the OG, OG. OnlyFans. Yeah. Right? She would post the kind of pics that gave them like a taste in the back of magazines along with some made up story like, I'm trying to go to nursing school, send money. And they freaking would. She would keep up the correspondence with them as long as the money was coming in. Then at the age of 21, she married her first cousin, which I don't recommend. I don't think anybody recommends that. Usually you should not marry your cousins. Right. Okay. So a he was Unless a man named step, Paul. Maybe. Step first cousin. I think keep the cousins at bay. There's other plenty of fish in the sea. Get right. on one of the apps. Sure. Shop around. Sure. Okay. Sure. Okay. So she married this guy. The upside of marrying her cousin was he was with the business. He helped her. No. Sort out the nudie pics, keep up the correspondences, you know? Okay. I think that's a bit like a very supportive husband, don't you think? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I'm telling you though, like I think sometimes if a guy's not jealous, then it's fine. Works. It works. A little it work for her works too though. That's right? true. True. Okay, well, they had two children together, and over the years, Bonnie really honed her hustle skills. She took great pics because she enrolled in the Barbizon School of Modeling. Do you remember that place? And yes, I remember that place because I went there. Of course you did. Of course you did. <laughs> For all of you that do not know, Barbizon, what they had these commercials. I mean, they had 
me convinced I could be a model. I know, I know. I went to another one too. It's called like Beverly Hills something. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I did two of those things. Yeah. Okay. And how to be a model, walk down the runway, pose yep. for pictures. Mm -hmm. And you pay a lot of money. And you pay a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so it was working for Bonnie. She also took detailed notes of everyone she corresponded with. I mean, it sounds like a real job. So she could keep her story straight and she recorded their phone conversations too. Wow. Yeah, she was dedicated. She was like, yeah, dedicated that's a hustler. That's good. She's a businesswoman. Right? Right. Okay. Well, Bonnie and Paul ended up bouncing around and landing in Memphis. But in 1982, her and Paul divorced. Right? That's nice. He was helpful in the beginning, but I can't imagine it's real easy to watch your wifey talk dirty on the phone to pay the bills forever. Now, divorcing in the family, he's still a cousin. <laughs> That's got to be <laughs> I difficult. Know. Yeah. You know, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. But I mean, you're still probably bound to Christmas and shit. I mean, you're right? at least at the family reunions going to be seeing the ex-husband. She didn't have any children with him, I'm assuming. No, I just told you she had two children with him. Oh, sorry. I'm doing too many things at the same time yeah. with my situation here. <laughs> I would just think maybe he wasn't jealous, but what I would imagine would be the problem was if it was my partner was so able to manipulate people so easily and callously in front of me. I think at some point I might get a little paranoid. Like, am I also getting manipulated by this person? Yeah, maybe. Okay, just a little speculation. Okay. Well, being in Memphis now and Bonnie now being a divorcee, she sought out someone well known in the area who knew something about being divorced. Although when he and Bonnie met, he was currently married. This was his sixth bride. And of course, just like Bonnie, one of his marriages was to his first cousin. I am talking about the one and only Great Balls of Fire, Jerry Lee Lewis. Are you familiar? I, had no, I am familiar, but I did not know that he also married his cousin. Oh, okay. He is so gross. I could do a whole story about the shit show that is his life. We know he was a bigamist. The first cousin he married was 13. He committed loads of tax fraud. One of his other marriages was he circled back to the 13-year-old bride's family and married her brother's ex-wife. Oh my gosh. And he was arrested on two separate occasions for shootings at Graceland. Oh my gosh. This guy's a piece. Oh, he is a piece of shit is what he is. So I think he's real gross. And I can't even believe he ended up in all being married eight times, I think. It might be nine, which I don't get. I think he has about as much sex appeal as Alec Murdoch. That's what I would compare it to. Okay. <laughs> so, so it's negative. Yeah. You're negative. like a negative. Yeah. Okay. But Bonnie didn't. She got close to his sister and oh. was able to get in pretty good with him and eventually get it in because she claimed to be pregnant with his child. Well, when she did that, that didn't go over real well with his current wife or him. He denied it. But Bonnie still felt like it should be so. So she named the baby Jerry Lee and sold her story to a tabloid. Okay. I mean, that is committed, right? <laughs> that is a little psycho. Extra. Yes. A little yes. extra psycho. Okay. Yes. Why would you want to name him after the douchebag that doesn't even want to? And it was a girl. She named a girl, Jerry Lee. Oh, gosh. Come on. Right? Okay. Okay. Well, that burned some bridges for her. <laughs> you along... would that? Really? <laughs> yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't thought that it would. Along with the DNA test confirming Jerry Lee was not the father. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's even worse. Did she so... change the baby's name? I don't think she did. Oh, okay. There is some baby change in names coming up. I think Jerry Lee is still out there. Okay, so Bonnie bounced from Music City, leaving her now three children with ex-husband Paul. Now she set her sights on Holly Weird. Okay. Mm -hmm. Side note, for what it's worth, multiple family members have taken up for Bonnie, saying she was like super fun, a little crazy, but she took great care of her children and she still financially supported them from La La Land. Okay. So I'm just give credit where credit is due, I suppose. Okay. Because we have like a little bias if you leave your children. Yeah. 
far away. Like that's far sorry, away. Sorry, I can't help it. But I realize it's kind of backwards because guys do shit like that all the time. I don't know. think it's right either. Yeah, I but... don't think it's right either. I just think it's more not right. Yes, yes. Her. I mean, yes. Yeah, sorry. Yes, yes, and yes. Okay. Sorry, Wendy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Bonnie developed a side hustle in addition to her naked picture hustle. She began marrying men and draining their bank accounts like by any means possible. You know, once you're married, it's real easy to get it, get all up in there. Her fraudulation claim to fame was walking away with $350,000 from a man she was married to for only two days. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. She must have been hot, right? Remember There's no that way that love she's getting fraudster? married. He like never got more than like, you know, 20,000 or something. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He could have like taken some tips from Bonnie. So Bonnie is the Disco Biscuit hot. I mean, not that she's a Disco Biscuit, but like. She's not a Disco she's... Biscuit for clarity because we don't want to hang out with her. Yeah. Right? She wouldn't make it in our friend group. Got it. But she's pretty lady. Like how she's is she getting cute. all these men to. Listen, Listen, Bonnie Marry is her. cute in the way that she's real cute when she's all done up, but she's no like, if you saw her in the grocery store, you wouldn't be like, oh, she's kind of cute. Cause I'll bet when she has no makeup and her hair pulled back, she's no Ailish, is what you're saying. Yeah, she's no Ailish. <laughs> our, yeah. friend, our friend Ailish, since the beginning of time, is like, every dude is like, she's so cute. And it doesn't matter if she's wearing her Ugg boots and a sweatshirt or she's made up. She just yeah. is the cutest. Yeah. Word. So Bonnie was married at least 11 times. So yeah, I mean, which is both, you know, she knew how to get a ring on it. That's a skill, right? Which is both impressive and depressing, I think, right? All these suckers out there just looking for love, right? I think she must have been a real good time. Like I, oh, looks yeah. only take you so far, but you got to have like the fun factor. Like these guys were like, this, I've never met somebody like this, this fun and energetic and down to get down or something. I don't know. Well, I don't yeah, know anything about like, her, but it, it's kind of like Dirty John, you know, he spoke the universal love language of, you know, making the coffee, bringing making smoothies, smoothies the by the bed. Yes, for sure. Yes. Bonnie clearly honed in on the love language of the men. I can think of a couple things that might have involved she was really good at. Yeah, well, we talked about it earlier. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. I bet she was very good. Okay, so the thing about Bonnie is she never really gave up the dream of being famous, but it kind of moved to just being attached to fame. She was working her way into Dean Martin's circle mm -hmm. when she went to LA, but she he died before she really sunk her claws into him. So she moved on to a famous person who was a captive audience for her because he was literally captive. Christian Brando, son of Marlon Brando, was serving time for committing manslaughter on his sister Cheyenne's boyfriend. Do you remember this story? No. Okay, side note, that's a whole other crime, but basically the story is Cheyenne told her brother her boyfriend beat her. And so when he met him for the first time, he was drunk and he says he wanted to scare him and he pulled a gun out. There was a struggle between these two men. It went off and it killed the boyfriend. <gasps> and then it came out that Cheyenne, who later committed suicide, had psychiatric delusions and there was actually no evidence that the boyfriend ever really abused her. Oh my God. Like, so tragic. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So Christian's serving five years in the clink for manslaughter. Okay. And Bonnie is interested. Bonnie does what Bonnie does. She sends him nudie pics. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and they began a relationship of sorts, which continued when Christian was released. And they banged during the same time period when Bonnie went out to a jazz club where she met the actor Robert Blake. She met Robert Blake at the jazz club and the same night she met him, she banged him in the parking lot in his car. Right. So Bonnie was 42 at the time and she was looking to get knocked up because reportedly she was taking fertility drugs to ensure that this happened. Because, you know, it's it's a challenge at age 42. Yeah. Okay, it, well, it, it did happen. It worked. It worked, yeah. But the thing is, now Bonnie is in a bit of a pickle. She might have had a hunch that Robert Blake was the father, but Robert, at 66, 
hadn't acted in a minute. He had some coins saved up. I don't think Bonnie really knew that because Robert Blake was not flashy like at all. Now, Christian Brando, on the other hand, he had like Daddy Brando money. And, you know, Marlon was loaded. Yes. So she would rather be with Christian than Yeah. So I imagine, you know, Bonnie is like mulling it over. Yeah. And is like, I'm going to attach this baby to Christian Brando. So that is why when Bonnie birthed a baby girl in 2000, she named her Christian Shannon Brando. Okay. She loves to name the baby girls after their daddies. Yes. Yes. So-called daddies that she doesn't know if it's a daddy because we didn't even know that Christian is the father either. Correct? Correct. Okay. Well, somehow Christian found out that Bonnie had also been banging Robert Blake. And he was the possible father and he was right pissed about it. In a recorded conversation with Bonnie, Bonnie, you know, like I told you before, she's big into recording conversations. Mm -hmm. He says, you know, you got me thinking I had a kid and it hurts. I know about Robert Blake. You're lucky someone doesn't put a bullet in your head. Whoa. Okay. Right. And did she say, Christian, you already went to jail for that. (laughs) Do you want to not do that again? Bonnie is very, like, she knows she's being recorded, right? So she doesn't confirm or deny anything he's saying. Okay. So it is what it is. When she realized that Christian was not going to, you know, support her without knowing for sure the baby was his, which was like months after she had had the baby. Then she rolls up to Robert Blake and tells him about the baby. Robert was like, yeah, I'm going to take a DNA test. And he conclusively found out that he was the father and he renamed the baby Rose Lenore Blake. Okay. I would imagine, yeah, a name change is necessary at that point. I would agree with you. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Otherwise, the poor child is like, how did you get your name? Well, my mommy wasn't sure who the daddy was. But that's how the other one got named. I know. I know. Okay. Two of those? Yeah, you can't do that twice. Yeah. We'll give you a pass for for one. Well, the thing with Robert was, although he said he never loved Bonnie, he said he decided he was, you know, 66 years old. There's no downside to giving it a shot with her and raising this baby girl together. So he proposed. Okay. Okay. Number 12? Number, well, this might be 11. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. They got married, but it was really more like an arrangement than a marriage. Robert had Bonnie sign a prenup, and the prenup was like no joke. It was 18 pages, and it stated that whoever left the marriage would lose custody of baby Rose, which is like pretty bananas, right? Yeah, it is. Like, why would you want to put yourself in that position? I I don't know. It's so weird, okay? But Bonnie signed it. And she made a life with Robert. She lived in a separate residence on his property in Studio City, which sounds fancy. And it is now. I looked up the house. It last sold for $4.5 million. Oh, yeah. But it has been fixed up a lot since Robert and Bonnie lived there. Okay. It was like an old ranch style home on a large lot. So there was a lot to work with. But, but they really had an arrangement if she's not even sleeping in the same bed or even the same house, really. No, 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 no. Yeah. Back when they lived in this house, it looked like your average house in the valley. Yeah. Okay. It was like painted shit brown, nothing special. Got and it. Bonnie was living in the back house. Okay. Okay. And the marriage slash arrangement was going all right, according to Robert. He says an area of concern for them was that Bonnie had so many jilted lovers out there and that she feared someone was after her. So Robert always packed heat when they went places. It's like, not, it's not, it's a, not entirely a stretch, but it's also not a thing that people in California do. I think people in Texas pack heat. Yeah. Arizona, probably Oklahoma. Yeah. But California, have you ever gone to dinner with anybody that has like, that brought a gun with them? Yeah. Only one person and he was a, he's a federal agent. So yes. he like has to. So he, <laughs> that's like, that's what I'm saying. Like if it was a police officer or, or something like that, but I just don't think it happens that often. Yeah, right. Okay. So he packs heat wherever yeah. he goes, supposedly. Okay. Okay. So six months after Robert and Bonnie tied the knot, They went out to eat at Vitello's restaurant. Have you ever been? I don't know if I've ever been, but my husband's friend's parents own that restaurant. Oh, okay. So it's had a couple of different owners. So I wonder if they, did they own it back in the day or have they they owned it like since 2010? No, they owned it. I think when this happened. Oh, well, snap. 
I know. He just told me that when I told him we were recording this episode. I was like, well, shit. Well, yeah, shit. Maybe we could get them on for Patreon. We'll We'll give you an update on that. We'll give you an update. At least we'll find out a little skinny on it. Yeah. Okay. Well, Robert was such a regular at Vitello's restaurant that they had a pasta dish named after him on the menu. Dinner was uneventful according to the, you know, them, Robert and the staff. When they got up to go though, Robert realized he forgot his gun in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. Now it was a little bit of a trek back to the restaurant, which might sound strange, but if you are familiar with Studio City, you know there is like no fucking parking there, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's not like that strange that Robert had parked in a neighborhood adjacent to the restaurant. No, that's what you do. That's what you do, yeah. Yeah. What is strange is that obviously- That he left his gun? Yeah. (laughs) That is strange. That gun is not something people just go around leaving places. Right? Definitely no, not in no. California at least. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, I don't even. If I was a server and somebody left a gun oh on the booth, well, I so would have just... freaked out. <laughs> I would have like called the police immediately. I was just thinking at the bus boys like cleaning up, and he's like, "Holy sh- shit, shit!" Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, Robert says he set the gun on the booth in Vitello's and covered it with his sweater. And when he left, he grabbed the sweater, but forgot the gun. Okay. I mean, that sounds reasonable. I don't think it sounds reasonable. I think you grab the sweater. You ch- I just, I can't imagine leaving the gun. Okay. Well, listen, you leave your cell phone like that. Oh, well, that is a good point, Tab. So I feel like Although, you could. Okay. I'm not bringing a gun anywhere. Tab leaves his uh, for shit everywhere. But I so. do think that if it was under there, I'd forget about it. And my cell phone is more important than a gun. True, true. Tab recently just left her purse. We had to dash back oh. into her. <laughs> oh my God. I definitely did leave my purse. I thought it was going to be gone for good. Yeah. Okay. So we'll, if we're the jury, we're going to say that's possible that that is what happened. I wouldn't be walking back though. I'd be sprinting back to get my gun. We sprinted back to get your damn purse. Yes, we did. <laughs> So <laughs> yeah. that also is more important than a gun. <laughs> yeah. That particular one was a very nice gift. Yeah. Okay. So he goes back to the restaurant, gets the gun, then he goes back to the car, and that's when he finds Bonnie shot twice in the head and shoulder and slumped over. So remember, he's parked in a neighborhood. So he goes across the street to a house and asks the owner to call the police because he needs help. His wife has been shot. The man calls 911 and tells the dispatcher, hurry. You know the actor Robert Blake? He just came over to my house and he needs help. (laughs) His wife is shot. Yeah. I mean, that's impressive because I had no idea who Robert Blake was. Yeah, I wouldn't know either. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then Robert goes back to Vitello's. Like picture Bonnie bleeding, shot in the car. He goes all the way back to the restaurant and asks, you know, is there a doctor in the house? Right? Okay. Okay. And he does manage to get a nurse to come back to the car with him where she sees Bonnie, you know, taking her last breaths. An ambulance arrives and takes Bonnie to the hospital. The ambulance arrives and takes Bonnie to the hospital. Robert opts to not go with her. He decided what? to go back to Vitello's. Yeah. For what? Well, he just wanted to sit down, have a drink. You're kidding which, me. I'm not kidding you, which police found real strange. They had like the same reaction as you. So then Robert tells them about, you know, the whole story about how everything went down and about leaving his gun in the restaurant. And they respond, you know, yeah, we're that gun, Robert. Yeah. Like, yeah. Robert, and has so that gun he, gone off anytime recent? Yeah. Like in the last hour. So he hands it over and Bonnie is soon after pronounced dead at the hospital. So now they are treating the whole, you know, block like a crime scene Mm -hmm. and they find another gun in a nearby dumpster with a sanded off serial number. Well, the casings from the bullets found in Robert's vehicle matched those from the dumpster gun. So it wasn't Robert's gun that was used. Okay. Okay. So this type of gun is like some rare gun from like World War II or something. And it was not one that anyone can connect to Robert owning. Still, obviously, Robert's story warrants some investigation. And by the way, no one from Vitello's remembers seeing Robert. No one. No customer, no staff member remembers seeing him come back in to retrieve his gun from the booth 
like he said, Robert's clothes were taken and tested for gunshot residue and small amounts were found. But I mean, it's like if you're wrapping your gun up in your sweater, you know, they're pretty minuscule amounts. Yeah. So like, like you, you feel like you would have had more if you shot somebody. Right. There was no gunshot residue found on his hands. So police get a search warrant for Robert and Bonnie's residences, and they find loads of evidence that backs up what Robert had told them that Bonnie had a lot of enemies because she had conned so many men. Well, the press had gotten hold of the bizarre circumstances that resulted in the shooting, and it was a big story. Not just because it involved an actor who most people had not heard of, but because there was so much out there about Bonnie and all these swinger magazines, you know, all the like salacious pictures. And in the, you know, she had this tabloid story with the baby from Jerry Lee Lewis. I mean, she's just fascinating. Yeah, all of it. All of it. Yeah. So her family came forward and said, you know, wait a minute. You know, she did some things that were questionable, but she wasn't all bad. And... Robert is an asshole, and we think that he killed her for show. Okay. But Robert was not arrested at the time. He held Bonnie's funeral, and Bonnie's family did not attend. Police continued their investigation and looked into everyone Robert was pointing to who could have had the motive to kill Bonnie, like Christian Brando, right? Remember the recorded phone call where he's like, Somebody "Yeah, put a bullet in your head." Yeah. So, did Christian Brando check out? Did he ever okay. have some sort of gun like that? He had an alibi. He okay. was in another state. Oh, okay, wasn't him. Yeah, wasn't me. Yeah, it wasn't me. Right. And so they ended up circling back to Robert after they got an anonymous tip that he had solicited two former stuntmen that he had worked with to kill Bonnie. <gasps> Both of these men were questioned, and they said they had nothing to do with the shooting, but yeah, they said Robert had solicited them to kill Bonnie. So then Robert was arrested nine oh. months after the murder. Okay. His grown daughter thankfully stepped up and adopted baby Rose, you know, because he didn't know his fate at this point. Yeah. Robert was held without bail and put in solitary for his own protection. While awaiting trial, he went through a couple of lawyers, including Tom Massaro, mm. which kind of shows that, you know, Robert is a real handful because, yeah. I mean, Tom Massaro <gasps> defends some real fucking nut jobs. Yeah. 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 Which, if he ditches you, that's saying something. Okay. Yeah. So Tom doesn't say why he quit Robert, but Robert insisted on doing an interview with Barbara Walters before the trial, which is why his first lawyer says he quit. Mm -mm, yeah. The interesting thing about that interview is that during the pretrial, the prosecutor introduced something from it into evidence. And so that gave the defense the ability to play the whole thing at the trial. Well, the interview is like classic Barbara, at the, especially at the time. She's like, Robert, tell me about your mother and father, Robert. You know, and he cries, you know, Barbara oh, always right. makes him cry, yeah. you know, and he describes them as sadistic and, you know, you do, you feel sorry for him. But to me, it's like, what does that have to do with whether or not he murdered his wife? Yeah, nothing. 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 And Bonnie is depicted as like this con woman, which, you know, she was, but also like, what does that have to do with her being murdered by yeah. Robert? Yeah, nothing. You know, it's kind of like spun somehow, like she had it coming. Right. Which is, you know, that, that's not. She right. didn't have it coming. She didn't have it coming. Okay. And then Robert gives this tearful plea, like looking in the camera to baby Rose. I think most people were moved by this, you know, but not me. I don't buy it. I of see not you. a manipulative, <laughs> mentally unstable man playing the victim in a shitty, cringy performance. You know, sorry. He is an sorry. actor, by the way. Yeah, so, he is, totally. yeah. Yeah. Well, at the trial, the stuntmen testified, but were pretty easily discredited because they both had criminal records and drug histories. And the one guy ended that's up why, saying, that's why Robert wanted to hire those guys because they exactly, were, yeah. exactly. That's who you go to when you want to hire someone. Yeah. Yes. Well, 
one of them ended up saying that Robert hadn't so much as solicited him to kill Bonnie as implied it. Okay. So it sounds like the defense attorney was real good. Right. Robert had a real good lawyer. So the jury deliberated for nine days and found Robert not guilty. We, the jury in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Robert Blake, not guilty of the crime of first degree murder. 14 years after he was acquitted of murdering his wife, actor Robert Blake is launching a tirade against the police and prosecutors. <gasps> yeah, this did not go over well with Bonnie's family, so they filed a civil suit for wrongful death against him and were awarded $30 million. Stop. Well, Robert does not have anything close to that. Well, I was thinking to myself, like, how the hell does he have $30 million? Yeah, he settled for 250000 Oh, my God. He didn't even have a million. No. So Robert's free. Not anymore. You know, well, he was free okay. at this point. And <laughs> he's okay. six feet under. But and okay. a, a little bit poorer, mm -hmm. right? Just a bit. Well, now he's able to be reunited with baby Rose. Well, listen, this is proof. He was just a manipulative asshole, right? He visited her a couple times. And that's then it? that's it. Why did he want Bonnie dead then? I think he is mentally not there. I think he became, he had like kind of a weird obsession with her. You know, I think it's like, it's complicated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And listen, she was still a baby. It's real easy to be like, I am in it to win it. I want to raise this baby when they are, you know, six months. That is six to eight months. That is the golden period, right? Totally. I, no, I love let's a nine month old. Your, it's so cute. But two year old. Let's see when you're 66, you want to start chasing around when they're like that 18 14 month old. Yeah. Yes. Stage from there on where they run around, you know, walking into things and you got to chase them everywhere. It's nonstop. Remember that? I mean, I think that's why you have kids young because you have the energy to do that, right? Like just, I saw friends with kids young and I, I think, oh my gosh, it is so nice when your kids are able to just go and come See, back and you're that's not. That's why I didn't have a nervous breakdown when I had five month old twins and I found out I was three months pregnant because my five month old twins, I thought, Hey, I've got them on a sleep schedule. This isn't so hard. No problemo. I had no, you had no idea. idea you what had it would no be idea. like to have three running around, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Basically ended up like wrapping my house in bubble wrap so we could all survive. Dude, remember when we went to Disneyland and you were like, I can't do it. I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> like, until they can actually like... I got better though. I did endure. Yeah. I ended up Dude. buying the pass. For sure. And made it work. Yeah. Yes. It's so challenging. Even having one at, that runs around, much less three like you, but yeah. Okay, okay so, so maybe he got he got a taste of what it's like to really have a small child have rose yeah and he was like mm, yeah, yeah i don't know if i'm cut out for this he switched her name again back to christian and was like here you go <laughs> here you go <laughs> mr brando <laughs> i hope not it seems like actually like it was definitely the best decision was to give her up for oh, adoption for to sure. his daughter his daughter is like a psychologist and her husband is like something else really smart and she yeah. had like a very normal upbringing but what is written about it is that robert and his older daughter had got into some argument about money and became estranged okay so then she didn't really have anything to do with her yeah, so then he didn't have anything to do with her. Yes. He Father. moved into a modest two-bedroom, which is where he lived alone and made YouTube videos of himself recounting his life as an actor until he died last week. No way. I did not know that he did this YouTube thing. Does he have a lot of followers? Uh, do people watch him? He has like over a thousand. Okay. He also showed himself like lifting weights and stuff like that. Also, if you don't, guys don't know, we also have a YouTube channel. You can find us at Housewives of True Crime. We have over a thousand. We're <laughs> <laughs> doing better than we, Mr. Robert Blake. Blake. Yeah. Maybe I could be wrong about that. Okay. Well, anyways, I watched some of these videos, of course. Yes. You know, I just don't like him. No, I, just, I know. I could tell you don't I like just don't him. I don't like him. Yeah, you could just tell I'm pretty transparent about that stuff. Well, Baby Rose grew up, and when she was 18 in 2019, she decided to contact Robert. Oh. She gave an interview to Dr. Oz about it and People Magazine. You know, she is the real victim in the whole thing. 100%. She looked like yeah. her mom? 
Well, she looks like them both. But okay. I think she looks more like Robert. She, I thought it was really interesting what her perspective would be to like kind of have yeah. this whole cloud over her. She told People Magazine, it feels useless to have an opinion about it. She said, say he did it or he didn't do it. What's the point of knowing that other than just to trouble myself? I think it's better to just see both sides for what they are and not try to overwhelm myself. It's complicated. But I want to uh, know. Yeah, but I do. Yeah. <laughs> but don't you want to know? I mean. I, yeah. I, it must be so bizarre to be so um, attached to something so twisted and but not remember any of it. But when it was happening, yeah. she was the center of it all, you know? So he never came out before he died and said, I did, I did it. it. No. Nothing. Yeah. But, you know, OJ's not going to either. So. Yeah. Right. But we all know he did it. He, he did it. Yeah. Well, she did not have contact with her mother's family until very recent years as well. Mm -hmm. It seems like before Robert's death, him and his daughter, the one that it's her name is Delina, who raised Rose, worked yeah. through whatever their differences were that led them to be estranged. I mean, I'm just speculating all that, but she is the one who actually released the statement to the public that he had passed at the age of 89, peacefully surrounded by family. Okay. You know, okay. So Bonnie's fine. I'm not sure where Robert is buried or if he's cremated or whatever, but I thought this was interesting. Bonnie's final resting place is like not in New Jersey where she grew up, where her family is. Her final resting place is at Forest Lawn in Hollywood Hills. Oh, yeah. Which, mean, which means she's in good company. There's For like a, sure. a buttload of famous graves there. Sons of celebs are there. Is So did he bury her? He did. Yeah, he, he That's why he buried her. her there. That's why he buried her there. Oh, he yeah, also the... probably has a plot right next to her. Oh, you think? Yeah. Oh, no. okay. Because he bought Wait, that. Listen. He bought Listen, we're gonna, I'm going to find out where he's buried and we're going to find out what Sean says about these Vitellos people and we're going to tell you on, on Patreon. Patreon. Okay. Yeah. Coming up this week. Yes. I'm going to find it all out. And so okay. if you are not on Patreon yet, you should really think about subscribing right now. If you do not listen on Apple, then you have to go to patreon.com forward slash housewives of true crime. But if you do listen on Apple, then you can just right now very easily just go to the subscription. It's right there when you're, if you just open up your app where you're listening to us and it just, it should have like a banner, I guess is what they call it. And just click and then bam, you can have all of this good info that we're going to get you. your ears. Yeah. And okay. by the way, we have tons of content there. So if you need more listening pleasure. Okay. All right. So we're going to get pleasure that. yourself. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> some other points of interest I discovered while researching this case were that the Vitello's restaurant decided to remove Robert's name from the menu. <laughs> and not choice. just that, they decided that to give the whole place an overhaul in 2012. And they wanted to ditch all the bad mojo that was associated with it because of the whole Bonnie Robert thing. Mm -hmm. So they auctioned off the famed favorite booth of Robert Blake on eBay. How much to go for? Thousand bucks. Huh. Okay. Okay. Now I would love to eat there. Not for anything crime related because I don't really give a shit. But um, because I looked over the menu and it looks it looks delicioso. good. It looks so good. All right. Next time we're in town, we'll go to Vitello's. Vitello's. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, they Studio also City. have to have they also have a speakeasy. In the Vitello's? Yes. Like a real back. one. Yeah, that's fun. I like and that. And it, it's by reservation only if you want to go. Okay. So, we okay. got to make a reservation also. Should. Yes. Okay. okay. I also found it ironic that Alec Baldwin posted a tribute to Robert Blake upon his passing. <laughs> You're like, recently. Uh, okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. It, it, let, this, let me tell you, like, no joke. This is what it said. I know some people will have some harsh feelings about him. He had some dramatic entanglements but i want to remember the talented actor he was okay to which i say sit the fuck down alec okay are you ever going to learn when to shut up because no. if anyone else had posted that you know fine but given your current situation being you like, shot and killed someone don't do it are, and are probably hoping that that's not what people remember about you. Your tribute seems a little self-serving. Totally. And I also it want is. to say, don't worry, Alec. I won't just remember 
that you, you may not have intentionally, well, I mean, I know you didn't intentionally shoot Helena, but you took no accountability for not checking the gun. I will also remember how you threw a tantrum and were kicked off a flight for refusing to stop playing words with friends after being asked to turn off all electrical devices. <laughs> I don't know how you don't. I will never how do you forget remember that? that. How do you remember that? When was that? that? Because like you could so still play asinine. words with friends. You could play not that. During after... ta not during takeoff. Of course you can. Oh, he must have been on his laptop or on a big device well, because you could play it on your phone, no problem. If they ask you to turn it off, don't you just turn it off? Do you make such a scene? I don't make a scene, but I don't. Listen, that would have, yeah. There are things about Alec that I really like, right? Like what? His Trump impersonation is so <laughs> China, <laughs> you know? It's like so freaking good. Uh, yeah. I never want him to stop doing that. Yeah. But. Um, so is that it? Is that. The, <laughs> but yeah. Other all. than that. Yeah. That's pretty much it. What is he on SNL doing that, right? Yeah. He's on SNL doing that. Uh, oh my gosh. Speaking of, this is the funny thing. So Gretchen and I, we were in what we said, we were in Hollywood for the Spotify event. And all of a sudden we're in this bar that no one is in. Like it's Gretchen and I, and that's it. Because it's like at what time? It was early, like five. Late for me, man. And Late then for me. <laughs> and we're going somewhere later, but it hadn't started. So we were like, let's grab a drink and little like appetizers. And then this crew of people walk in and they're filming remember this oh yeah i forgot about this but yeah they're filming i don't know what they're filming their youtube we have or no idea TikTok who or whatever this person is i wish people could just see how phony baloney all this shit it was is. so phony so baloney they are walking in there no one's in there and they're like popping bottles and clinkety clinking <laughs> yeah. like we're having the best time because they're walking the, around with the camera crew. They were not yes. having the best time. It's so funny. No, it was so fake, you guys. So there's the guys with the lights and the guys with the camera. And then they've got the bartender. Because I remember I started recording it. So I watched I watched it back. You got the bartender in the back just shaking the drink. Like he is Shake just it. shaking it. And the yeah. girl is like having the big birthday party with the cake. And we were like, what in the world is going on? So... Anywhere, so there's these two guys in the teeny weeny beanies. Remember? Oh yeah, teeny weeny beanie. So there's this. <laughs> you guys look it up. It's like YouTube, but it's on Jimmy Fallon, and they make fun of these. Like they do this, like teeny, teeny weeny beanie. And then in Park City a couple of days ago, there was a guy there at the ski school. He was at the desk, so he was inside because I would assume a teeny weeny beanie wouldn't actually be a great thing to wear in Park City because it doesn't cover your ears. But he was also wearing a teeny weeny beanie, teeny like those beanie. two guys filming. I'm like, it's a thing. You know what I would like to say? Not an attractive bar, thing, by the way. This was one of those very cool bars that has like random shit that looks like a little scary, you know, like whatever. It you was know, in we that were, SLS it, hotel. It makes, it makes you feel like you're cool just because you're like there, you know? Yeah, it's supposed we to be the like best a speakeasy damn waiter. kind of thing. I he have was. Had, he like, that guy just has no idea. It probably will never listen, but shout out to that waiter. I mean, best damn waiter. He was. was. so on point with the food and the drinks was so fun to talk to. And when we left, we had two glasses of champagne and he was like, oh, you guys got to go? You want some to-go cups? I know. He was great. He was good. And then we were like, oh no, we, I, we, we wish we could. You know, he was like, oh yeah. Yeah. But it was he like, was no, really we good. appreciate the offer. We like, <laughs> totally. we, like a, we like a roadie. Yeah. <laughs> we do. Yeah, he was good. Oh, it was such a fun trip, you guys. If you want to know more about that, we talked about all the the skinny on some of the things on our Patreon last week. So once you join, go back to last week's episode. It's we give you some some dirt on our Spotify adventure. Yeah. Okay. So you have more? I have no more. Okay, well, that's it. So please follow us on all of our social media platforms. Like I said, we're on YouTube, Housewives of True Crime group on Instagram or on Facebook, which is our private group. So you guys can post whatever you want there and none of your friends or your family are going to see it, which by the way, you know, have you ever joined a group before that's not private? And then somebody's like, hey, I saw you post this. I'm like, oh shit. I don't know how that happens. It's because it's not private. It's like a, a, it's an open group. So then people just see what you're posting. It's like so embarrassing. 
Yeah. So don't worry. It's private. Only the people that are in the group can see it, which is good. We're on Instagram and we're on TikTok, which Gretchen likes to say, dick cock. <laughs> That's <Right>. it. <laughs> so okay. until next week, clink, clink, clink. clink.